worry if you don't get it all. Um, you know, each of the grant reviews will have a review chairperson, um, which is the program staff person. Um, and so they will work you through the grant review process. But we're offering this to sort of give you guys a better understanding and some, um, some level of uh, comfortableness when you go to do the grant reviews, okay? So um, just an overview of what we're gonna cover today. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what will be included in your grant review packet. Uh, I'm gonna go quickly over what's in our state plan language. Uh, that's generally the, the item that we use to design the project that we're talking about. Um, I'm gonna review the grant application, the parts of a grant application. I'm gonna go over the scoring and score sheets, um, including the budget and fiscal review. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the conflicts of interest, uh, what a conditional award is, and then I'm going to show you a couple of slides from our, uh, our video online of the review process itself. Uh, and then I have some more information about um, some changes for this year, like electronic forms and the type of meetings that we'll be having, and stipends, if you're interested. Okay, so... Um, Everyone who is a grant reviewer, viewer, both external reviewers and council members will get a grant review packet, okay? Um, the last bullet that I have there is we're working to make the packet electronic and I'll show you some of the electronic forms. Um, but if you do not, if you don't wanna work on the computer, if you're a little old fashioned and you like the, uh, the hard copy, uh, we will send you the review packet um, hard copy form, okay? Um, so you will get in the review pack packet a memorandum or a cover sheet, and that will identify the date and time of your review. Um, it will include uh, uh, probably a link to the meeting, um, and it will include um, information about what's included in the, in the uh, packet that you're receiving. Um, you'll receive the competitive review format. So this is a this is a description of the process that we follow. We provide that to you, um, so you can follow along. That's what the review chairperson is going to is is going to follow. So it'll say step one: collect the ethic statement. Step two: um, remind everybody about uh, uh, we don't change plan language. Step three: uh, you know go over the state plan language, etc. So the, you'll get in that packet, everybody will get that uh, review format that'll describe uh, the process that we follow. Uh, the next is that you'll get this one copy of the state plan language piece for the project that you're, um, that you're reviewing. Um, and then you will get an ethics statement form. So if you're getting a paper, if you're getting a hard copy version of it, uh, you'll get one blank ethics statement. Uh, actually, I take that back. You'll get an ethic statement where you can check off yes or no. I have, I, I either have a conflict of interest or I do not, and then you'll sign that. Um, you'll get a copy of each application that is received for that project. Um, you will get a score sheet, and you will need to to complete the score sheet for each application that you receive. Um, so if you have three applications, you're going to fill out that score sheet three different times, once for each application. Um, and then uh, for our external reviewers, we do offer a stipend. Um, there will be a form in that packet or attached to the email if you choose uh, to receive that electronically where you can request the stipend. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is very quickly, our state plan language is broken down into uh, different parts. Every plan piece that we have starts with a legal authority. You typically identifies the section of the DD Act that we based our authority to do this project on. Um, it'll identify the goal of the project. It'll have the objective and impact, um, background rationale and scope of the project, the reason, you know, how did we come, come up with this? Um, the key activities is a very good section to look at because you wanna make sure as you're reviewing those projects, are they covering the key activities um, that are identified in the plan language? Um, additionally, the outputs that are listed in the, um, in the state plan language, this used to be referred to as uh, performance measures. Uh, we've changed the term to outputs. So that appears on the plan language. It'll identify a goal that the council has set. 
um, you want to make sure that in the application that you've received, um, do, are they uh, trying to achieve the outputs that are identified in the plan language? Um, so there's a place in the application where they can um, identify the outputs and set a goal for themselves. Uh, we have a, each plan language has short and long-term outcomes. This is key for uh, the competitive process because our competitive applications are written Rochelle. to a five-year cycle. Rochelle, what'd you say? Our competitive, uh, um, a, a piece, a big piece of the application is written to over on a five-year cycle. And then there are a couple pieces that are written to a one-year cycle. And I'll go over that with the parts of the grant application. But you can um, identify the short and long-term outcomes that the uh, council is hoping to achieve from the project and see if that matches up in the application. And then the resources to be invested, that's, uh, that will tell you how much uh, the project that the council is planning to provide in federal funds. Um, for some projects, I know that it's, it can be a little confusing. Um, I know Leslie has some projects that are, uh, you know, one, one amount one year and a different or larger amount in later years, or uh, there might be some staggered funding. If you have questions, you should really check with your, um, with your program staffer that is your, um, that is your review chairman. De Debbie, do you have a question about the state plan language? Um, yes, I I'm sorry. I'm familiar with the term outcomes, very familiar. Maybe it'll be clear when I receive the packet and this is a question you want to defer. What is the difference between outputs and outcomes? Or output, will that be in the package? Yeah, well, an output is just another word that the feds use for performance measures. So um, we have specific identified performance measures or outputs like um, SC 2.1 and it specifically defines um, you know the number of the number of family members with uh, of children with disabilities that were active in advocacies let's say that's the that's the output um, so that's and, more of a quantitative that's that yes measure yes okay so the outcome your definition the output is more of a quantitative measure and maybe the outcome is more of a qualitative measure is yes. that that's a good way to put it. Yes. Yeah, like that. Okay. Okay. And I'm sure it'll be clearer when I receive it. I just thought I'd get the clarification. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So uh, moving on, I'm going to go over the pieces of the grant application. So um, our applications are submitted through our online program called the DD Suite. Um, the staff will be taking that 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 application and putting it in a Word document. And on that Word document, you'll, it'll identify, you know, the title and the project number. Um, it'll have the organization staff. So it'll have the individuals at the organization that are assigned either the organization director, the project director and the fiscal staff. Um, and then it'll have the project outline. Um, th this is the narrative portion. The project outline is the narrative portion of our application. So we ask um, six specific questions on the narrative portion. Um, uh, you know, provide a one paragraph abstract. Uh, question two is describe your qualifications to achieve the project. Question three is, um, you know, what, what, what is your project, right? What do you plan to do over the five year cycle? Um, question four, um, question four is nine sub questions. That's our outreach section of the application. Um, we ask you to be to identify the honor underserved population that you plan to uh, to work with, but that you plan to target actually actively engage, um, and uh, you have to identify how they're how they're identified as honor underserved. And there's a couple of questions there. Um, it's it's very helpful to have the nine sub questions. Inclusion is a question that. Uh, that we ask our folks to um, identify how they will include people with developmental disabilities in their project. Um, so it's um, including them in the project design is helpful. So uh, entities do uh, tend to um, explain where that is. And then there's a budget explanation question. Question six on our project outline is the budget explanation. You see I have an asterisk there. Um, we, and I'll show you on the score sheets, 
we ask that you score the budget explanation with the budget rather than in the outline, and I'll show you how, how we're going to do that. Okay, um, the grant application also includes our project work plan. So the work plan, I, I mentioned before, we have this project outline where we have the narrative here. Um, that's on a five-year cycle. So we want them to explain, and we've told the grantees at our bidders conference, explain your project over five years. In the work plan, we ask them to explain your how you're going to achieve the first year of your project. What, what um, outcomes and activities are you going to undertake in year one? Um, it includes timelines for those activities and the staff responsible. Um, it includes the performance. See, I haven't even updated this. It includes the performance measures or the outputs. Uh, so the work plan will have, there's a, there's a section on the scoring sheet where we look at the, their work plan. Do they have a clear work plan? Uh, do they include an outreach section or an un or underserved population in their work plan? We're asking all applicants to do that so that we can um, actively monitor and track their engagement in the uh, outreach portion of their grant application. Okay, and then we have the project budget. It is also built around one year. Um, there are eight categories that they can design their budget around. That's the personnel with fringe, the personnel without fringe, their contracted subcontracted services, space and rental, travel, supplies and publications, other direct costs, and volunteer services, and indirect costs. Um, typically, what, what uh, you should be looking for is does the budget that they build, um, does it help them achieve the outcome of the project, right? Um, you know, we, we tend not to, I think we instruct our review panels, you know, if, if you know, you know, like, you know, uh, John Doe is working on the project and you go, well, he's not worth $50 an hour. Well, that's John Doe's budget. That's what he said that he needs to, um, to achieve the outcome. We tend not to, you know, um, uh, go, okay, I don't agree with that amount. Um, this is their budget. All right, um, and the budget explanation. So I mentioned before that question six in the outline is the budget explanation. So this is a chance for them to determine, you know, they might have said, I need $5,000 for travel in their budget. Well, in the budget explanation, it's an opportunity for them to identify how did they determine they needed $5,000, right? Um, some, some of it might be mileage, some of it might be internet, you know, air, airline travel or hotels or whatever. We asked them to explain how did you come up with a $5,000 figure, provide your reasoning, provide the numbers, provide the calculations. So that should appear in the project budget. And then um, every project budget or line item will be broken down into either council funds or match funds or some combination of both. So you'll have like a total project cost of say $1,000, for example, um, and say the entity says, well, $500 will come from council funds. So that's the federal grant money that we're giving them. And then they'll say 500 is coming from match. We're gonna provide it as match because all of our grants are required to provide match. Um, and then if they have match, they have to identify the type of match, is it in-kind or cash, and the source of the match. Okay, so that's the project budget. The last piece of our application um, is the supporting documentation. So we're, we've asked everyone to sign our federal assurances. So this might be something that the fiscal staff in our review will say, uh, they didn't send their assurances and they'll ask you to place a condition on that, which I'll go over here in a minute. Um, it also, we also ask them to include letters of recommendation so you don't technically score the letters of recommendation, but when we go back up to this uh, question on qualifications, um, we can say, okay, I'm, I'm scoring this qualifications. Let me see their letters of recommendation. Maybe that'll help me score that section. Um, and then we ask for resumes of project staff and a list of board members if they do have a board, if applicable. So those are some of the supporting documentation that you may see. Um, in other cases, we've had grantees submit applications with other, uh, other attachments uh, that, that we will provide to you. I'm not sure how useful or helpful it is for you 
um, maybe it helps you understand a little bit more about what they're trying to achieve. All right, so the scoring in the score sheets. So uh, we, we do the competitive review on a scoring system. So we have a 100 point system. Um, and we ask that every application be read and scored before the review. Uh, you can't show up and go, okay, I'm ready to, I'm ready to give this a score. No, you have to have that done because when you, you'll see when we do the review process, you just give your total score on a per, per application to the review chairman. Um, you, don't, you won't break down uh, uh, what's, your, what's your score on this or what's your score on that. Uh, you're gonna submit your total score per application, okay? You do have to complete one score sheet per application. Um, we strongly encourage you. So if you're going through it and you have questions or comments, that there's a place on the score sheet for you to add, to write out your questions or comments. Um, it's very helpful. And it's very helpful when you're doing the review, uh, you know, to, to check your notes. Those are your notes. Um, I will tell you that we ask you to, uh, to sign the score sheet. And if we're doing it on electronically, you sending it via your email, that'll be your signature. Um, but uh, those score sheets are, available to the entity. So if an entity says, can I see the score sheets from the grant review? Um, they will see your notes, okay? Matt, did you have a question about the score sheets? Matt? No, but I did leave a, a, something in the chat. Okay, we'll see you later, Matt. Bye-bye. All right, so, um, so I, I went quickly over the project outline has six sections and we assign a, a point value and I'll show you a score sheet so you can see how that works. Um, we assign a point value per question. Um, and then um, on the score sheet, um, on the score sheet, so you'll be, follow, just follow the score sheet, okay? Don't, if, if you're looking at the score sheet and question six says, okay, what is the project work plan? It's not gonna match up exactly to question six on the project outline because that's dealing with the budget explanation. So just follow what the score sheet is asking. You know, if it's asking you about the work plan and go look at the work plan and do your score there rather than go, wait, six, six, question six here doesn't match up with this question on the score sheet. It just doesn't work that way, okay? When you're reviewing the project outline, as I mentioned before, skip the review of the budget explanation because you're going to want to look at that when you score the budget on question seven of the score sheet. I'll show I'll show you that as well. So uh, the project outline will have the you know five points, ten points, uh, forty five points, fifteen points, so on. All of these have a maximum value, um, and then there's the work plan, and then there's the budget. And when we do the score sheet, we just want you to move the budget explanation over to the budget. So it'll appear like I'm looking at their budget and then I look at their explanation and then I assign the score. All right. Uh, there are two types of conflicts of interest. Um, there is a pecuniary conflict of interest. So this is, um, and this is listed on the, um, ethics statement that we ask you to sign, but that's if you as a reviewer or your immediate family member has worked, is currently works with the applicant or has worked with the applicant within the past year. Um, so you would, you know, if you say you are on the review, you're on the review panel and you, um, you know, you work for an entity and you go, oh, I'm, I'm gonna quit working for you so you can apply for that grant. No, there's a one-year cycle, uh, a one-year um, window that uh, you cannot serve on the panel. Um, if the reviewer or immediate family member receives compensation from the awardee during the grant, so um, you, you could not be employed by the entity that wins the award. Um, and then there's a fiduciary conflict of interest. This is if you are a family member, immediate family member, is an officer, trustee, or board member of the applicant. So you could say, well, I'm not getting paid by the grant, but I happen to be a board member of the, you know, my local ARC. 
uh, in there of lying. No, no, that's a fiduciary conflict of interest. So you would have to recuse yourself or remove yourself from the grant review. Um, the conditions. So we, um, I mentioned the uh, conditions before. Let me get all these on the screen here. Um, a condition is uh, something that a review panel can place on an application. So let's say the application comes in and the work plan does not include uh, specifically um, an, a, an objective or any activities associated with their outreach, uh, uh, reaching to the un and underserved. So you can say as a condition of this award, you must alter your application to include that um, include that piece of your project. And until you make, until you satisfy that condition, you can't get any money, okay? Um, so that's, you actually can't get the, the notice of the uh, award letter. So the review panel can place conditions that must be satisfied uh, before the project receives a final award, okay? Um, a condition should not result in rewriting an entire proposal. So you sat down, you've looked at three or four and you go, well, we really like this entity, but the whole project needs rewritten. Um, have them submit a new one. That's not really fair to the other entities that could rewrite their whole proposal. Um, so we say, you know, you shouldn't, shouldn't have a condition that requires rewriting the proposal. Um, each condition should be specific to a need in the project. So as I mentioned, the, the, uh, if the work plan doesn't address, so say, say they address all this stuff in the narrative and then the work plan doesn't, doesn't include any activities uh, associated with achieving that outcome, you could say, wait a second, I want your work plan to include that so that we can keep track of your activities. Um, and uh, when we place the conditions on a, a potential awardee, what they will do is they will provide a response, they will amend or alter their grant to, to respond to the conditions. What the council staff will do is they'll send that to the review panel and say, this is the response received. Um, they'll likely give you their opinion as to whether or not they believe the uh, applicant met the condition or did not meet the condition. Um, and if you're okay, you know, in a week, we're gonna issue the, the notice of grant awards if you're not okay, we will reconvene. If somebody says, I object, I don't think they've responded to my condition, then we can reconvene. All right, so I'm gonna go quickly over what a review looks like. So um, what's gonna happen is you're all gonna come together. Um, uh, members of the grant review panel will meet by video conference. Um, all of the grant reviews are subject to Ohio's open meetings laws, okay? So if, if the grantee says, no, no, I wanna sit in on the grant review, they have the right to do that. Um, we, can't, we can't stop them from participating in the, in the route. Now, they don't have to participate, but they could witness it, right? Um, so anyone who wants to attend is allowed to attend. This is subject to Ohio's open meetings laws. Um, and during the review, you should have access to your completed score sheets. You should have access to the application um, there will be times when somebody says, you know, I'm looking at paragraph eight of the of question four. It, it's helpful for you to go look and see what they're talking about as you do the review. Okay, so everybody will have their, their packet in front of them. At the beginning of the review, um, I believe that the, let's see here, the chairperson will collect the signed ethics statement from each panel member, okay? So you'll each get a particular ethics statement. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Um, and the chairperson will say, okay, I need to make sure that nobody has a conflict of interest before we move forward, okay? Um, and you'll, so you'll all, um, you all provide that to the chairperson. What I would say is get, e email that, you know, the day before. Look, you've, you've obviously scored it. You've obviously done all the work, you know that the, if you know that there's no conflict, if you do know there's a conflict, you should alert your chairperson, the program staff immediately so they can find a replacement. Um, but um, you can email it the day before and that way that process is taken care of. We're not sitting in a Zoom meeting waiting for emails to come in um, to make sure that there's no conflict of interest. So they're gonna collect the, 
ethics statements. I got, and the chairperson's going to collect that. All right. So then, what the chairperson will do is um, they will report their total scores that they gave to each proposal. Okay. So they'll say, okay, I'm looking at proposal A, you know, person one, what was your score? Person two, what was your score? And everybody will give their score and the chairperson will add it up and give a total score here. Okay, so they'll all uh, submit their scores and it'll get added up. And now we'll have a total score for the proposals that were received. All right, the next step is that, um, sorry, So the chairperson will ask, is there any objection to removing the lowest scoring proposal from cons further consideration, okay? So they'll say, okay, this is the worst scoring. Does anybody object to me getting rid of it so that we don't even talk about it? If there's no objection, then we take it out of consideration. We won't talk about it anymore. It did not win, okay? And then starting with the next sc lowest scoring proposal, they'll say, okay, does anybody object to removing this one, okay? And if there's an objection, and there is on the screen here, um, we're gonna keep that. We're gonna set it aside and we can talk about that some more. And then the chairperson will go through all of the proposals that they've received and say, okay, can we remove this one? Do we wanna remove this one? Very rare to see the highest scoring proposal removed from consideration. Um, it's not that it can't happen, it's just, it's rare. So. In my um, sample here, we have two proposals that the panel said, no, no, we want to talk a little bit more about this. Um, and then starting with the lowest scoring proposal that is still under consideration, the chairperson will ask the panel to, uh, to engage in a discussion. Um, you can see the guy that looks very much like me, uh, glasses and buck teeth, um, gives their two cents. Um, so once each panel member has had an opportunity to weigh in on on the proposals, then the chairperson will ask them to um, select a winning project. Um, there will need to be a motion and a second. All right. Okay. Um, it's at this point when we select the winning proposal that the committee will want to, if they have any conditions, questions, recommendations, or suggestions to vote, okay, yes, I approve this pr proposal with, with the stated conditions, with the following questions that need to be answered, et cetera. All right, uh, once this is done, um, so uh, I don't know that we're gonna have you sign a review format sheet um, we're working, we're working now. If we do have you sign something, it will be on the same uh, form as your ethics statement since so you really only have to sign one form. Um, we're reviewing on whether or not we need that because we've, we've gotten rid of the appeals process and that's what that sheet was for, was for our appeals process. Um, once this, this has been completed, you're done. The, the panel is adjourned and as Fatika says in our online video, you get to go home. A um, couple more things before I finish up. I think I've almost caught us up to time. Um, stipends, so uh, external reviewers are eligible for a stipend for your time. Um, so as you can see, you, your, uh, your agreeing to serve on our review panel isn't just showing up the day of. We asked you to put in a considerable yeah. amount of time and effort beforehand to, um, to grade these, review them, to write your notes and then to come prepared to talk about. It. So um, there is a process for requesting a stipend as an external reviewer. Um, there'll be the form uh, there. So you just complete the form and submit it to your chairperson. I think if you're not in, um, Gary tells me if you're not in the state system, uh, there might be additional forms to fill out. Oh, very funny, very funny, Renee. Renee's making fun of the guy that uh, that looked like me, he had hair and I don't. Very funny. All right, so the electronic forms for meetings. Um, so we have the ethics statements in the score sheets. So I'm gonna back out of this. Right, let's see if I can show you. Um, 
a sample ethics statement. Oh, Tim, Tim showed up to laugh at my lack of hair. Thank you very much, Tim. Um, so here's a sample of our ethics statement, the electronic version. So you can, you'll get this and you can click on it and you know, type your name. Uh, we do need you to enter your email address. That's, that's the way we can confirm your signature. <coughs> and then there's an, excuse me, there's an explanation of the pecuniary and the fiduciary conflicts of interest. And then your form will be, uh, customized to the review that you are doing, all right? So if you're doing a grant review for, uh, you know, for coffee day at the state house, then that'll be the, the, the applications or the ethics statement that you get. You'll get the names of everybody that's applied and you'll have to say, yes, I have a conflict of interest or no. And then you will sign at the bottom and enter your date, okay? So that's your ethics statement. And then your score sheet will be electronic as well, if you prefer that. Uh, you can enter the grant number, so that'll be on the project, uh, 22BD01SC22, okay? Um, you'll identify the applicant that you're, um, that you're reviewing. Who, who did we say we had? Uh, okay. And um, it'll, so you can see here, question one, provide a one, that's, that's what we've asked them to do. And we're asking you as a review, does the abstract clearly state the goal of major activities? You can enter your notes here. You can enter recommendations here. You can enter a score here. So if I enter, um, my point range is zero to five. So say I did, they did an okay job. I entered two um, at the top it will automatically add up all of my uh, points, okay? So go down to question two, I enter um, five points here. Uh, you can see, is the applicant qualified? Are the mission philosophy consistent with council's mission and philosophy? Um, if I look at the front page, oh, I didn't tab out. Um, so total screening points is seven. What I'm doing is I'm entering a number, let's say I enter four here and then I hit tab, tab button on my keyboard, it'll take me to the next field. My comments, tab, my recommendations, tab. Okay, so um, it'll take me here to this one. Now the point range is not limited, okay? So if you say, wow, I really like this, so I'm gonna give them a hundred points for this section, your score is gonna show you have 106 points. Well, it shouldn't exceed 100. It shouldn't exceed 100. So you should stay within the point range. Um, and so that's what your score sheet looks like. Any questions on that? All right. I think the only other thing that I wanted to uh, to say is. Um, we plan to have the meetings virtually uh, because we only have one Zoom room. I think we're able to schedule a, uh, all of the staff are able to schedule Teams meetings. Um, so if you don't have Microsoft Teams um, or you cannot get Microsoft Teams, you need to let your, um, your chairperson of the committee, the program staff know immediately uh, the Teams thing is a free download. We recommend that if you are gonna participate that you download and participate via the application on your computer rather than via the browser base. Um, if that doesn't work, we'll figure out a way to reserve a Zoom room for you. Um, and that, that review panel may participate via Zoom. Courtney, did you have a question? Can you unmute? Sorry about that. Um, if we're a council member, um, when will we get the um, the form? That's a great question. So the deadline for the grant applications is July 2nd. Okay, I think that's uh, Friday. Is that right? July 2nd? Um, that's going into a, a holiday weekend. So um, I know that the program staff will immediately begin reviewing those 
applications to make sure that they're complete. Um, our, our policies say that you will get the packet no less than two weeks before the review, okay? So you'll get it at least two weeks in advance. And I know that the staff are gonna try to, to, to do better than two weeks. So probably um, you're looking at mid-July. Anyone else, uh, Debbie? We're gonna get these in mid-July. And then the review is the first week of August, right? Correct. Okay, I'm sorry to be stupid here, but there are two questions I have. Um, first of all, who do I check with? Cause I moved. Who do I check with to make sure that they're not caught up in the mail somewhere that they uh, have my current address? Yeah, so if you want your packet by US Postal Service, um, you need to inform the staff person that- of Oh, the it'll come form. electronically. Oh, okay. So it, if- Right, that's how you're gonna send them is electronically? Uh, it's your choice. Okay. So how if do you wanna, I indicate? Uh, yeah, we want you to tell your, your staff person. The plan, the plan is to do electronically, um, I think, but if you want post office, just, it doesn't hurt to tell them I, I choose this. Okay, no, no, no problem. Um, that's great because I'm gonna be out of town for the two weeks in July. And I was worried about, first of all, like getting caught up in the wrong address. And then how am I gonna read this within two days of being back and get everything to you? So electronically, hopefully I'll have good Wi-Fi service. <laughs> Thanks. And I just want one last comment. Um, uh, I do a similar thing for the college here where we rate um, excellence in teaching awards for the faculty and it's very well regimented like this. And you have done just a wonderful job here of oh. rating, putting together the rating, it, it, it follows everything that I've done for the college since 2004 for the excellence in teaching. And after that last meeting, this meeting is just so wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank okay. you for bringing things back into a wonderful perspective. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yeah, Paul, I have one. Sure. Now, this may this may be a dumb question, I realize, but um, each grant review panel will have um, its own chairperson, correct? Yeah, that'll be the program staff person. Okay, good. Because I, I was worried that I might have to try to chair all of those. Yeah, the, the program staff person will run the, the review itself. Uh, now, generally, uh, you know, yeah, the program staff person will run the review. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I, again, um, if this is your first time doing your review, uh, you know, don't worry about the process, like the staff person will walk you through that process. Um, the important part is to read the application, com complete your score sheet, um, and be ready to talk about the project. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Paul, for that wonderful presentation. Um, and now we will move on to executive director's message. Carolyn, did you have anything you wanted to say? Well, I just wanted to say to people that if you see a conference, either virtual or real, that you would like to attend, um, let us know. We, we only would fund, of course, something that is disability related. Um, but it never hurts to ask, both in state and, and out of state. And if you have questions, you know, as I say, it never hurts to ask. So 
from the county board conference to, to anything at all that you see coming up, you can certainly send a request in to, uh, to me and we will, uh, in all, in all um, almost all chances, we'll be, we'll be funding it. So I wanted people to know that that was an option that they had if you sit on council. Thank you, Carolyn. And real quickly, if I can add something, um, I just wanted to, um, I, I know it's, it's late and we're a little behind schedule, but if possible, could the staff stay behind after the meeting for a couple minutes? Sure. Thank you. Um, are there any other announcements? Are there any other questions for any of us? Thank you, oh, everyone. I, just wanted, meeting. I wanted to ask the question, if we wanted this recording, is it gonna be sent out to all participants by chance, at least the training portion? Yeah, the, the meeting is recorded. Um, it will be, we will be posting the full uh, recording, which you can find the training at the end here um, to the, our YouTube page. Um, and I know that our um, Kim, the person that will be doing that is unfortunately out of the office for the next week. So it will be a little over a week before that gets posted to our YouTube page. Oh, okay. And uh, with that, I would uh, entertain a, are there any other announcements or questions really quick? Just want to throw that out there. Hearing none, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. This is Rochelle Hall Rollins. Um, I move that we adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Rochelle. Uh, do I have a second? I second, Jody Young. Thank you, Jody. The meeting is so adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a great weekend.